It's so great to see all of you here today. Uh, today is a very special day, and not just because this is actually the first time that I am seeing four of my council colleagues in nearly seven months. It's nice to see you still exist, not just on the other side of Zoom. But it's an important day in many other ways, and I know that there's one question on everyone's mind above all else, which is, of course, what is the mayor wearing and why does he look so good? Uh, and the answer to that question is that this outfit was made for me by the students of the Fashion Institute at Olds College, located just across the street in Bow Valley College. Uh, and I think it's magnificent. It was made in the style of the early mayors of Calgary, George King and George Walker, and I thought it would be appropriate to break it out today. It's not quite 1911, but to break it out today to remind us of the history of this extraordinary building. I want you to think about something. 1911, Calgary was at the end of its first boom. The population had increased by tenfold in just a few years. We had gone from 5,000 to 50,000 people. But look at this building. This is not a town hall built for a town of 50,000 people. It's a statement about what this place wanted to be even then. So the folks who were smart enough to build this magnificent piece of public infrastructure in 1911 weren't building for that day. They weren't building for 1911. They were building for the future that they wanted to build for their children and their grandchildren. They were making a bet on the extraordinary future that would happen here in this community. And I think that is an example worth emulating for all of us. How good does it look? I have never seen it look like this before in my life, and I find that extraordinary. Is the, is the clock working now, Daryl? I can't see it from here. I have so many stories about this building. When I was a kid going to school, riding the C train, I didn't always have a watch. They didn't have cell phones then. So when I got just past Olympic Plaza Station, I would look up and I would know from that clock whether or not I would make my bus at the other end. I always imagined what was going on inside this building. And even when I got the chance to work at, as a summer student uh, at the city in the early 90s, I never really went into Old City Hall. It was too special. It was too precious. And I'll never forget, just a week or two after I was elected, I was in the office late at night on a Saturday, nothing changes. And I suddenly stopped and thought to myself, I just walked in here. And it says something about our community, I think, that this first generation Canadian kid from Marlboro could just walk into City Hall and sit in his office. And nobody cares what he looks like or where he came from. They just care if he's got his pass. And to me, that too says a lot about who we are as a community. Now getting to today has been a long process. In fact, some of your city council colleagues, some of my city council colleagues, your city council, have actually never been inside the building. They've never had their office in there and I'm really excited for them to really see what it could be like. But this wasn't something that really was a choice, although council made that choice in 2015. It was something we had to do. There was originally a wooden town hall on this location in 1885. And as Calgary became a city, we decided to build something better to do that city building. And of course, after a great fire, we decided that we would rebuild our city in this extraordinary sandstone. What's unusual about this building is that it still operates as what it was built to do. Well, yesterday, we uh, put in a four, our 100th um, and three others, historical resource designations. If you look back at those designations, with the exception of private residences, very few of them actually continue to operate in terms of what they were built to do. So there was a lot more in here before. There were stables, there was a dentist's office. It was truly a town hall. But since 1911, the building has housed voting, ballot counting, it's housed city councils, it's housed mayors. I understand more than 20 mayors and hundreds of city councillors have had their offices in this place. It's been our seat of democracy for that long. 
And if you didn't know, there's a reason we're doing this ceremony today. Because on September 15, 1908, the cornerstone was laid on historic City Hall, the ceremonial tradition that marked the start of construction. And the mayor at that time, Arthur Cameron, said that he was confident that the building would see Calgary through the next 50 years. Well, I'm happy that his worship, Mayor Cameron, was wrong because that 50 years has turned into 109 years. I think this is the finest municipal building in all of Canada, and it will continue for 100 years at least going forward. So I want to say thank you, City Council, for making that investment. I was reminiscing with Councillor Woolley yesterday that uh, in 2014, I, in the summer, spent some time reading up some reports on the historical condition of all of our buildings. And I said, you know what? It's a shame that we are not keeping our buildings that the city owns up to snuff. And so I prepared a proposal for council and asked that we fund every single building that we own so that they could all be restored to functional level. Council agreed with that in November 2014. And then a year later, we decided that all of the money had to go for this building after it was damaged in the flood. So some work remains to be done, but we will continue to do that work. And I'm thrilled that council uh, created uh, this project and did this work. But I gotta tell you, I am most proud of Daryl Bell and of his team who have treated this as a labor of love for four years. They brought it in using the mayor's four favorite words, right? On time, on budget. But at the same time, they did beautiful, extraordinary work on this building. And it really was love for Daryl and for the entire team. So I wanna say thank you to Daryl, to his team in facilities management. I particularly wanna say thank you to the women and men who did the work. With their strong backs and their great skills, they have created a legacy for citizens for this city forever. So thank you to stonemasons, 233 full-time jobs, by the way, to the stonemasons, the carpenters, the electricians, the construction managers, really everybody who put on a hard hat and high vis and steel toes and came out here and built something for Calgarians. Let's hear it for them. Because ultimately, this building belongs to all of us. It is ours. It has stood on this corner. It has seen innumerable changes to the city of Calgary. It's seen celebration. It's seen protest. It's seen building. It's seen people coming here from every corner of the earth. It's seen us in more recent times fully embracing and acknowledging the indigenous history of this land. And it will see generations and generations of Calgarians left to go. So with that, I am proud to officially announce Historic City Hall reopened. So folks, what we'll do is uh, we'll take questions for Daryl, for Chris, or for myself now on this. Please hold on questions of the day. I will scrum later today uh, during a council break and we can do those. But if you have questions about City Hall, we'd be thrilled to answer them now. Wait, absolutely. Mais, mais, euh, mais dis-moi, moi, sans, sans le masque, parce que je ne peux pas écouter. Quelle est l'importance de cette rénovation C'est très important pour la ville de Calgary, mais, mais, euh, mais même c'est plus important pour la communauté. Euh, le bâtiment ici était ici depuis... <rire> 1911. Et... On a vu d'ici beaucoup de changements de Calgary. Et j'espère, j'espère bien que le bâtiment va être ici pour son temps et pour l'avenir et pour toutes les générations de Calgary qui viennent. So the question for those who didn't hear was about the clock. So it is currently running. Um, just let me explain a little bit about the clock. The clock is a very delicate instrument. Um, the int original intention was for the clockmaker, so there's only five of them in North America, all of them are in, are in the US. So when we had the clock back here, the intention was for the clockmaker to come here, help us rebuild and calibrate it. That has unfortunately, because of the pandemic, not been able to happen. So we have been virtually 
uh, teleconferencing with the clock maker to build it ourselves in the tower. So right now we have a slight misalignment of two gear wheels and that's what we're trying to fix and then it'll be fine. It's it's almost there, we're almost there. Daryl, tell them about how it's wound. <laughs> it's, so it's actually wound manually. Uh, so basically once a week, uh, one of our uh, staff will climb up into the clock tower and they will wind it manually. We did look at, just for interest, we did look and see if we could replace the manual with an automatic, but that was against the whole premise of heritage, of heritage rehabilitation, so we kept it as original. So yeah, it's manually wound. No, no, the bells are separate to that. They, were, they we didn't do anything with the bell. They're just connected. They're just there's a misalignment between the two gear wheels. That's why they're out of sync. Sorry, can't hear. Is that why the bells are not sounding? They are sounding. They're just five minutes out. <laughs> no, they are sounding. Can you just talk about this forecourt area? It's had a number of different looks over the life of this building. Why was this? Uh, so, the, yeah, the forecourt you're standing on today is, is, is an accurate representation of the 1911 forecourt. One of the photographs here on the easel shows you that exactly, I'm going to point to that one there, and if you look at that landscaping, that is exactly what we have here today, and that was one of the, the goals we had. Rehabilitation is to renew it or to bring it back to the original intent and purpose, and that's why we have an open landscape and this landscaping plan, so it's very original. Well, it's more than being cleaned up. <laughs> uh, there's some stones that have been replaced. The, the uh, balconies have been rebuilt. They're actually brand new, the balconies. So, but structurally, it looks the same. The major structural upgrade was inside the clock tower, as I mentioned in my speech. So, yeah. Great question. I, I know my project manager would have exactly the answer. I believe it's about 80% is new. There's actually a lot of new stone here. Um, sorry, I might be wrong. It's the other way around. 20% is new. 8% is original. So yeah, the face, the face of the building is primarily original. The new stuff is about 20%. So bye. And is there anything you can say about how we chose is as good a color match as we could have obtained and uh, I would say within a year or two you will notice the difference. In fact if you're over the other side of the cloud trail it's really hard to see the new stones from the old but yeah there is a difference in the tone uh, but they will age very quickly I would say a couple of years. We did yes yeah. so the stones came from three locations for different purposes. Uh, there is this, the, the stone, the, the hardest, most dense stone, which is below the ground and at the ground level, is from uh, Ohio in the United States. The stone you can see very high up in the building, which is uh, it's going to take the most element, uh, it's going to have to sand the elements, that comes from Poland. And the, the stone that's on the face of the building, which is the closest color match, comes from Spain. So this is from three places. So, another great question. Uh, so, there was, the, the 15 quarries that were operated here in 1909, they're no longer existing. There's only two available places where stone is available. One is in Edward Lee Park, uh, but the mineral rights for that quarry were held by many, many different people, and for us to get it in time and reopen the quarry to, to meet this timeline wasn't possible. The other one is under development, it's under housing. So again, not possible today. So we did look at that in 2016, but the decision was made to go abroad to get the stone that we needed. Carol, did you find any any surprises in there? Uh, any autographs from some of the guys that, that worked on this building originally? Yeah, uh, so I think some of you had the opportunity to come with me into the building during the renovation or the rehabilitation. And up in the clock tower, there are some initials carved into the stone, which we've left. We have not taken any of those away. They are part of the fabric of the building, they're part of the history. Uh, and the one thing we did find, of course, was the, the flag from the visit from the Duke and Duchess of Connaught, which we're going to uh, frame and mount. Um, yeah, so that's the one piece that we found, which is fabulous.